Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Folani. And um, well, welcome back from the election in Anambra, uh, even though that's in a metaphoric way. But all of Nigeria, so to speak, was in Anambra, at least through the television, through the news, through the observers. And uh, Governor Willie Obiano is the man. He keeps his job. He's been re-elected. Um, not just re-elected, being re-elected convincingly, beating the next man to him by more than double what the APC candidate uh, scored. Okay, we'll come to that. Um, and by the way, you know, the governor says that in one of the papers this morning, as you're seeing, my triumph is for a number of people, says the governor. Okay, nice. Um, Majid Jamil, Executive Director, Upshot Media. Thank you very much for coming on. Good morning, Yori, and uh, good morning, Nigerians. Indeed. And Yemi uh, Mapadiru, Strategy and Governance Experts. Thank you very much, as always, Yemi, for coming on. Thank you for having me. Good Indeed. morning, Nigeria. Indeed. Um, uh, le let me start off. Both of you monitor political activities, but let me start with you, um, if I may, Majid, because... Um, you know, you know, it's not always I'm going to give you a free pass that, um, uh, yes, you are a journalist, but you also were a politician. I don't know, for all practical purposes, you still or might be a politician. I'm, but a, I'm a journalist. <laughs> <laughs> Combination, combined honors, uncle. <laughs> but, but seriously speaking now, um, Obiano has won. Yeah. As I said, he won convincingly. Um... What, 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 what happened there, apart from the electorate, you know, voting for him, but more than double the next guy to him, something like four times the, the, uh, the, the tally of the other guy, the, the guy after that, and um, winning in just about, in, not, not just about, in every local government area. I was thinking it was a record until I was told that actually Fayoshi did it first. What, what, what happened? Um... It's, it didn't come uh, as a surprise as much uh, because you know, we analyzed the situation in um, Anambra uh, here uh, about a week to the election and we narrowed down to just three participants, or rather we narrowed down to four, but that with more emphasis on, on three, mm. uh, the incumbent, uh, Obiano, uh, then the APC candidates, um, Mwoye, uh, Dr. Mwoye, and uh, also um, the PDP candidates, um, Wanze. Obazi. Uh, sorry, Obazi. Obazi. So, Who, by the way, is disputing Obiano's victory? Well, it's... It, In it's, fact, not, not disputing, rejecting it. Well, he has the right to reject. Of course. Uh, but <laughs> the people of Anambra have spoken. And it, it points to the fact, this, this election points to the fact that uh, Nigerians are becoming very aware and become very conscious of their electoral value and that... You don't, uh, federal might will not work for you if you are not really serious. And you don't take people for granted. And that Nigerians are shifting and drifting away from Godfatherism in politics. So, for the people of Anambra, a, 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 a consistent trend is emerging. If you have Godfathers rooting for you, it might be your albatross. And that, that's what has happened. Obiano swore, I mean, sorry, uh, Peter Obi swore on whatever that Obiano will not return. But here is Peter Obi, he was beaten flat and square in, in his local government. Indeed. And it's a major loss for Obi, Peter Obi, a major loss for Chris Ngige, and a major loss for Atoeze. I mean, uh, those. I mean, uh, the, for, I mean uh, the, the, the godfather, so to say. So for Biano, he has been able to stamp his feet on the political leadership in Anambra State. Today is a force to reckon with. And a force to reckon with, but yeah. also something of a, a perhaps a political orphan in the sense that I'm talking about his party now, um, Abga. Uh, Abga isn't anywhere else. You know, are they? Mm. Uh, they no, they're just, no, just Anambra. Just, yeah. just, just, just Anambra. Yeah. Um, so, coming out, the results show that they came out en masse. Um, all the candidates in the morning were saying that, no, I I'm satisfied with this. Uh, and by the way, another aspect of it, Majid missed uh, talking about it, or maybe he just strategically left it out to come back to it. Uh, there's the whole IPOB nonsense. 
that uh, there will be no election. There was a, and um, I think I heard some commentators say that, you know, the crowd was a respectable crowd. I mean, the, 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 the size of the people that came out to vote. In, indeed, the last Goba election in Anambra State was a plebiscite on so many issues beyond the, the coveted seat of the governor of Anambra State. And like Majid rightly pointed out, some of the identified sponsors or godfathers <laughs> of other contestants mm -hmm. actually were also uh, metaphorically, you know, on the ballot on that day. Obi Atoeze and Ngege for uh, Unwoye APC, Obi for Basile, and then, like we pointed out, Obiano was more or less an orphan. And when you look at the run-up to that election, there seemed to be a grand swell of, you know, uh, opinion, I mean, uh, sympathy for Obiano to win that election, especially from non and umbrellas. And I also noticed, even from the body language of Mr. President, when he went to uh, Anambra or Nicha to, I mean, Oka to campaign for Unwoye, mm -hmm. he was able to immediately order the reinstatement of Governor Obiano's security details that had been, you know, uh, sent on an errand, you yeah. know, by the police hierarchy just mm -hmm. before the election, which is an indication that the president was willing, you know, to ensure a level playing field. And I also think that it's a plus, you know, for, for Mr. President also, because there seemed to be uh, the jury out there that APC was bent on winning mm -hmm. every election, mm -hmm. you know, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And the fact that this election took place and that for the first time also, for the first time also in a long time in Nigerian electoral history, you had uh, all the observers, you know, local and international, saying that that election was almost perfect. Indeed. indeed. And so the, the IPOP uh, dimension also, like I said, that election was a vote, not just for the governorship of Anambra State. IPOP was recalcitrant, you know, in insisting that people should not go out to vote. And not just saying that, and also threatening that anyone that goes out to vote will be seen as an enemy Indeed. of, of Biafra. But the people turned out, and from the figures reeled out, um, this figure of over 400,000 voters coming out to vote in Anambra far exceeds mm. what you know, we saw in 2013. Even though some, uh, I saw one candidate on television um, saying that uh, the, uh, the, the, the votes cast exceeded uh, the total number of voters. But you see, you know, candidates of sour grapes will say anything. Well, well, well perhaps it might be referring to the uh, cancelled you know, results. There were areas where more people voted than were even accredited. And so that is also to tell you the interest that the election you know, generated. But one important thing is that over 130,000 votes were voided in that election. So you are talking about almost a quarter of you know votes cast at an election mm. being voided. I think INEC really needs to look at uh, that to see what may have been responsible. And the, the, the remarkable aspect about it is that uh, Governor Willie Obiano won in every single local government area. Now that's a telling commentary um, on, on, quite frankly, uh, the electorate. And the point that Yemi made about Mr. President ordering the reinstatement of the security details of Governor Obiano, um, th that, that, that was a master stroke because the votes Unfettered votes have shown how the people of Anambra wanted to decide. Could you then imagine if anybody had tampered with that and um, the result had been different, uh, the groundswell of resentment? It reminds me slightly of when uh, Madiba, uh, the great Nelson Mandela, remember back in the day when um, he, he expressed relief that they didn't win uh, as convincingly as not to need anybody else's contribution in parliament to make laws. He actually heaved a sigh of relief, say, ah, oh, now we can engage as brothers, political, you know, have disagreements and all of that. Surely some of that comes over to Anambra State in, in, in the situation that we're in here. Yeah, a, lo a lot of um, factors uh, uh, went into play on uh, the Saturday during the election. They call that uh, Infanyuba was a PDP candidate 
was, was an aspirant to PDP, lost to uh, the PDP uh, uh, candidate. Mm. Uh, um, he defected to Abga. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he was aggrieved. Yes. And, and also the likes of um, uh, Stella Odua, uh, Ukashuku, all of them in PDP uh, were not happy with the result of the election. Uh, they felt um, uh, the, the candidate was imposed, I mean, in one say, by, uh, the, the, by, by Peter Obi singularly. I mean, the, given the fact that, I mean, uh, they see him as a, as, as, a, as, as a newcomer in the party. He only left Abga after the 20, uh, 2013 uh, uh, elections um, to uh, PDP. So uh, those factors uh, uh, came to play. And also for, for Biano, uh, I think the people were convinced that um, it should continue for the next four years. Hola. For APC, it's unfortunate that um, uh, the, the party took a lot of things for granted. And uh, if you look at the debate uh, before the election, apart from the fact that uh, uh, Chidoka of the UPP did fantastically well during the debate, but then I said here that debates don't win elections. Mm. But even you don't take people for granted, six, six or seven political parties had campaigns running intermittently during that debate. But you won't find uh, any, any advert or political campaign of the APC. I mean, when you, are, when you feel too confident, when you feel that a federal might somewhere will work for you, it's a, it's a signal that with Buhari, you have to do your homework, you have to work very well uh, to win an election. There is no federal might anywhere. Uh, you, see, exactly. you, saw, you, saw, you saw a Buhari that ordered the reinstatement of the security details mm. of the governor, mm -hmm. I mean, like, like Yemi said. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, 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 the security details that were withdrawn by, by the IGP on a very flimsy excuse. So he allowed a level playing field. And I think it's a, it's a kudos to a Buhari and a very pass back of like a 75, 80 percent to INEC Indeed. Uh, uh, for, for the Anambra election. And I think INEC will continue to improve uh, uh, in, 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 in the forthcoming uh, elections. Okay. Well, at this stage, um, I wanted to say, but Divine, uh, in Abapa, good morning. Good morning, yeah. Divine. Yeah, good morning. Okay, I go ahead. Say, yeah, I want to say the issue of an umbrella election. To those that felt that uh, Obiano wouldn't win. Good morning, Farari. Yes, I want to say the issue of an umbrella election mm -hmm. is a welcome idea. You see, uh, the people of Anambra has made a choice. And I will not be surprised if the opposition now go to court. Because in Nigeria, whenever you win an election, it's free and free. But whenever you lose it, they say they reap. But in this very election, I want to tell you, sincerely, there was no reason. But the issue is that the Anambras have elected who they want, not the, from the federal government to oppose a candidate. So, Indeed. Africa okay. will remain in Anambra for the next decade. All right, then. Yeah. Thank you very much for calling in, Divine. So, yeah, Governor right. Obiano has another term of four years. And uh, going back to the president's action, it shows that, look, the president doesn't just talk the talk when it comes to this whole matter about uh, due process, doing the right thing, anti-corruption. Um, you know, he can actually walk the talk as well. Mm -hmm. and, and so he, he did that w which was right. Yeah, uh, this whole matter about federal might somewhere, Look, Buhari is the guy who said uh, it's not business as usual. Mm. Things have to change. And this is part of it. But going into the substance of the election and the result that we have now, uh, the man, Willie Obiano, clearly his people want him. You know, whatever critics or opposition will say, um, what are those things that endeared him? Uh, uh, he seems to have made tracks in agriculture, whatever else. Uh, but agriculture seems to be one of the one of his highlights, right? Yeah, you see, in addition to uh, Governor William Biano's performance in office, um, particularly in the area of agriculture and security, uh, there are so many other factors yes. that actually worked in his favor. And many of us saw this coming. Now, but let me go to the issue of agriculture first and foremost. One of the Anambra is imagined as one of the food baskets of Nigeria. And that is happening under Willie Obiano. Number two, 
four, five years ago, if you are in Onicha at 6.30 p.m., you are on your own. But today, yeah. Yeah, I today, that. not just today, for the past, I mean, I was in, I was in Asaba um, in, in 2014, and I had calls to go to Onicha, and I had people talking about how security had improved and so on and so forth. But the question I was asking was, how did he do it? Till now, it still <laughs> appears to be a secret to the man, <laughs> apart from the fact that you could see that you know, the whole place is being lit up you know, yeah. at night, so uh, there is minimal you know, hiding place for hoodlums and the rest of it. But in terms of security, security has improved drastically in Anambra State. But there is another tendency that worked in this One way. second, please. I'm okay. going to let you come back. and uh, We'll come back and you continue, but I've got okay. to go to a commercial break. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. We're looking at the convincing victory of um, Governor Willie Obiano in Anambra State. Very, very, very clear. Just packed everybody, the whole field. The next guy to him, he more than doubled, you know, the figures of that one. And we were just looking at, um, well, uh, good on him. But w w what are the things? And you were yeah. talking about some of yeah. them. Yeah, I, I was looking at the tendencies that worked in his favor. And I said, in addition to his performance in the area of agriculture and security, and of course, this futuristic idea of having this airport city, mm -hmm. you know, because of the, you know, the, the, the business culture in you know, Anambra State and the rest of it. There are other tendencies, the Ojuku factor, for instance. Now, Abga has succeeded in embedding in the mind of the masses in Anambra State that Abga is Dim Odume Gojuku, and Dim Odume Gojuku is Abga. Yeah. And I'm going to commend Chief Victor Ome for succeeding in that venture. Victor Ome has been a very, the rock of Gibraltar behind Governor Willie Obiano. And I'm sure if you ask Governor Willie Obiano, he will say Victor Ome is his political <laughs> no, master. The guy took upon himself the role of being the chairman of the campaign council of Obiano, an assignment that some other former party leader would have considered as, you know, Infrared. demeaning. Yes. But he took it because he knew what he wanted. And he kept saying that Obiano was going to win with a landslide. And he wanted to win 55% of the vote mm -hmm. in a field of 37 candidates. Mm -hmm. Is no mean feat, and to win in every and local to win government. In every local government is no mean feat. Now, Abubakar in uh, Kano. Good morning, sir. I think I just missed Abubakar calling out of Kano. Uh, Mr. Abubakar, see if you can do it again, please, and um, I'll interrupt myself mid-sentence if necessary. Um, so sorry we missed that call. Uh, uh, well, Majid, I, I mean, I, I can hardly get over the fact that, in, as Yemi pointed out, yeah, there's the dim uh, factor. As if to sort of emphasize it and underline uh, the acceptability of uh, uh, Obiano, winning in every local government? I mean, what, yeah, what, what? Even, even in, in local governments of uh, Chris Ngige. Even in Chris Ngige. Ngige, Ngige only managed to win in his ward, but um, it was defeated in yeah. uh, Obi. So there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's something in that. O Obi, Obi lost. <laughs> By uh, from eleven thousand to six thousand in in his local government. So what's uh, going on? This is something that political yes. the scientists uh, students See, need to try and understand. So I think I think Yemi said it that when, when the masses are involved, I mean this is the kind of results you get. And you know even the defection of uh, um, Emeka Juku Junior uh, on the eve of election mm. from Abga, uh, a party his father formed, mm -hmm. to APC didn't change the equation. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, they, they probably they saw him as uh, somebody. I mean, who is in, uh, I mean, as, as we could see, inconsequential in this. I mean, so, but then um, Obiano was quite um, uh, 
ambitious when um, after in his post-election uh, victory uh, 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 message uh, acceptance speech when he said um, Abga wants to emulate what APC is doing, starting from Lagos and conquering the whole of Nigeria. <laughs> Very ambitious. <laughs> I, wish, I wish him well. Okay. <laughs> let, okay. Let, let Abga take the whole of Southeast first, first. <laughs> okay. and then move to South South. Are they in South Africa? <laughs> Joe Berg, good morning. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling good in. Good morning, Uncle Mojud, and good morning to the other gentlemen. Good morning. Mr. Yemi Mapadirun. Yes. We, we monitored the Abga election on Saturday, and... Uh, and I'm not really surprised that uh, Obiano won the election. But I, I pray, because it should send a signal to the ruling party in Nigeria that, like Konku Mungi said, era of Godfatherism is going step by step. And era of imposition also is also going to be a thing of the past in Nigeria very soon. The people on the ground are getting wiser every day. The electorate are also getting wiser every day. But my prayer now for Obi Ano is, you know, there's always a second time syndrome. Whenever they are elected as a second time governor, they misbehave. They delay completely from where what they are used to doing in the first time. Mm. But I pray it doesn't miss its uh, it doesn't miss its target this time around. And I pray that the people of Anabra will enjoy its second time and not like others after elected the second time they become something else. Thank you and good morning. Thank you very much, Abi, for calling in. And uh, that's uh, reiterating something that uh, Yemi started, y Yemi first said about the, the whole Godfather syndrome, uh, it being the, the hold of it being a lot weaker uh, uh, in, in, in this election, in this Anambra election. Um, but then perhaps it's also known, I don't know, I don't know what you think about this point. Perhaps it's also known that uh, those guys over there, Igbos in particular, um, they don't been like told what to do and how to go and this is when to do it and all of that kind of a thing. Uh, people are sort of, it's like, it's in the folklore that it's known that they don't like that. You might try, mm. but you're going to get their back up. Sorry, that work here? Sorry, quickly. Um, to, to react to what uh, Abby from South Africa said, sure. it's not in all instances, it's not in all cases that some governors don't perform in their second uh, yeah, term. Well, yeah, Obi yeah, yeah. did very well in his second mm, term. Yes. Fashola did very well in his second term. Indeed. And but I, but you, know, you, you know where he's coming from. I, I yes, agree with you yes. that there are so, those exceptions. There are some but, exceptions. But now they don't have anything you know, uh, at stake anymore, yeah. so some of them slack off. Um, but w what do you think of this whole uh, an attitude, the, the attitude, perceived attitude of the yeah. people? You know, the, the, the Republican spirit mm. in the average, you know, Igbo is something that spanned even pre-colonialism in Nigeria. Okay. And that was why it was not possible for Lord Lugard to, you know, <laughs> impose indirect rule, mm -hmm. you know, in the, you know, the, the, the southeast of Nigeria. And so that is there. I guess uh, Mr. Peter B. misread the signal. The fact that he was as incumbent governor he anointed Willie Obiano to succeed him, and Obiano won. Apparently, made him to think that you know he has become a kingmaker. Yeah. And I think the root shock that he got, you mm. know, by putting just seventy thousand votes in the whole of Anambra and, <laughs> and coming <laughs> coming second to a party that has been uh, negatively derided yes. as belonging to the House of Fulani, uh -huh. coming second yes. to APC yes. in. Anambra election, I think that is even the bigger news than Willie Obiano's uh, 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 victory yes, at the election. Yeah. I haven't, haven't said that. I think I like the, the gusto, you know, of Willie Obiano, and I think that can help him in maintaining a kind of momentum in terms of performance. Mm. If you have a tall dream of looking beyond Anambra, and that is what I had, you know, canvassed at other fora, that if the southeast of Nigeria wants to exert sufficient influence on Nigerian politics. They should just go the Ashwa Jubala Metinubu way, the APC way. Build Abga and then make Abga to become a beautiful bride at first, yeah. which the southeast was actually, you know, in the Second Republic uh, politics of Nigeria. But we forget so soon. Yes. We, we scream marginal, marginalization if we are out of the system for four, eight years. But the truth of the matter is that a time there was, 
that you, there was no way of winning election in Nigeria if you do not win in the Southeast. If Obasanjo had not won in the Southeast massively, he would not have become president in 1999. Mm -hmm. So there is a need to consolidate on that. And I think that is the dream, that is the vision that Obiano and Victor May has. And I wish them success. Okay. Uh, Yakub, apologies for keeping you waiting. Good morning, sir. Yakub. 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 Yes, Good morning, sir. Go ahead, please. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Sorry for thank keeping you, you waiting. All right. Thank you very much. And then good morning to Mr. Mapadura and then Mr. Jami. Thank, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. I think uh, the election that uh, just concluded uh, in Anambra State, I mean, I think it's a true reflection of what people want. Uh, if you look at that election, uh, in person of uh, the candidate of uh, APC, uh, Tony Uri, the candidate of the other party, and the, the rest of the three candidates that follow the OPNO, if you look at them, all of them, they are formerly PGP. If you look at them very well, they are all from PGP because they joined the different uh, parties that they use the platform to conduct it. And then if you not calculate all the four types, four, four, they all of them gone. They are not even up to the another uh, So that is to tell you that it's a true reflection of what people want in that thing. But I would think that I, I, I quite agree with somebody that I call from uh, South, South Africa, if I'm correct. You see, all these are governors. They always work for the first time. They would try to work hard because of because they will need our vote in the second time. And then when they succeed of being getting our vote in the second time, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yori, they wouldn't do anything. A typical example is that just go to a hotel. You would see, you would just speak the clear example of what I'm saying. So that is not it. Because but the election, our, our policy today is to allow all those things to happen. If there is a situation where they can amend the constitution, giving them the right. So go for the first time. I think for me, I will do it. Thank and God bless you. Well, thank you very much for calling in. Uh, Ogun State is, is wider, but um, I didn't quite get where uh, what, what Yakub meant. I mean, I, mean, I can talk about Abekuta. I mean, there's a lot of activity going on there, uh, infrastructure-wise, you know, construction, roads, bridges, and all of that. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I understand what you're saying generally. Okay, we'll, uh, welcome back. Willie Obiano's victory, all the rage, uh, the resounding, convincing victory. And then, you know, uh, a couple of uh, folk at least have now said that, look, the only thing is let these guys watch out. We, the, the, some governors have a tendency of slacking off in their second term. And to which I responded that, well, my governor in Ogun State, um, maybe he's a, an exception. Uh, but then Ogun State is more than Abekuta and uh, Yemi piped all that. Look, if you come to my part of Ogun State, then I might say I agree with them. But that is without prejudice to the fact that... Um, but, but, the, but the principle here is that it's a warning that Governor Obiano, you know, can't slack off. He can't afford to slack off. And not when the people have massively, you know, uh, decided in his favor. I mean, he, uh, before he comes down from that high of winning in every local government, I mean, quite frankly, it's, as Yemi said, it's almost perfect, an almost perfect election. Everybody, uh, you know, conducting themselves the way they were supposed to be conducting themselves. Um, it, it's a study. It, it, it was a study in how to go about these kind of things. Uh, security, in short, just about everything that was needed in that election. I know it's a human affair, so you can't say anything human is perfect, mm. but mm. by and large, a well uh, organized, uh, you know, uh, election, right? Yeah. Even by even by observers, uh, very high standards. In by by <laughs> election observers, very high standard. Th that that election was given a pass mark, with the exception of you know, late arrival of and, polling and, materials and some, and some, and some polling units. Yes, yes, everything yes, yes. got to the local government and on Friday, and, and, and also know? the failure of uh, the card reader in some yes, places, yes. and they quickly had to switch to yeah. the manner. So it looks but like they were just that, prepared. Think, yeah. um, you know, um, uh, calling in from Wadi now, uh, Raymond. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Uncle. How are you doing, sir? Thank you very much for calling. I'm doing great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, quick, my contribution, my greeting to the, uh, the men in the, sure. in the studio. Sure, thank you. Go ahead, please. 
Okay, my contribution, a uh, lesson learned from this uh, election is that it's better for a sitting governor to perform so that he will spend less money in buying votes. Hmm. And another thing is that some persons have talked about the second uh, second term syndrome. If Abda must continue to win, it is left for Willie Obiano to keep on performing so that the next governor will have it in very easy way to win and that way they can extend their tentacle in the east before going forward. Mm. And one thing we will learn is understand is that if you have performed credibly well, you don't need any godfather to keep on, because in the case of Hada, we think that if we want to point godfather, we might only say it's only Victor Omen that is the godfather there. And he did his godfather in talking to the people. Mm. So we don't need much godfather to pay them money so that they will have an empire to support you. Just do the needful. Just take it one day at a time that you just have one tenure. If you did well in that one tenure, then the other tenure will be easy for you. Going forward, even if you don't have ambition of becoming a senator, just think of the party that the party has to exist, so that even in your second tenure, you can work very well. And another thing, I want a situation where we will be free of police people everywhere, army people everywhere, just to conduct one state election. It should be in the place that it should not be even a public holiday. I can go and vote and come back and carry out my normal daily activity. We should be getting to that point. I, I think I congratulate the people of our number of states, and I pray that the governor will continue to do well so that the party will exist. And all those other guys from the PDP, I think they, they and uh, the other party, they must have learned their lesson. It's better to stay and let one person go than every one of us trying to get it from different places. It doesn't work that way. According to our local palace, if you face one direction and begin to win, then it will be easily for the way to bring phone for you. And that's the way it should go. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for calling in. Uh, gentlemen, what, 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 what was the part of money in all of this? Uh, in your perception, you weren't there, you weren't sharing anything, uh, so none of it could be an eyewitness account. But the role of money, which people think is it's indispensable to elections That's and uh, when we, of course everybody knows it's no news around the world elections will cost some money but in Nigeria when we say elections cost money we have our own meaning it will be exchanged I, for votes I, I, I think um, Chidoka Osita Chidoka should um, I mean he's the one that has been saying that uh, he was uh, outspent yes. uh, in the Anambra election but then even if it may I mean you need to pay uh, those who will be your party agents, for example. We have about 4,186 polling units in Anambra, and you need uh, about at least one party agent each. So if you pay 10,000 to one party agent in 4,000 places, you are talking about 400 and something million already for party agents alone. So <coughs> it's, election is a very costly exercise. Mm. But then, like, like you said, you're, there's, there's no way you can prove that um, uh, somebody collected money to yeah, vote. Exactly. And we have also seen instances where people will collect your money mm -hmm. and still vote against you. Uh -huh. so, so, but if you work very well and people actually believe in you, they might collect money from a particular candidate and still vote their choice. Okay. So, uh, Abdul Rahman in Lagos Island. Good morning, sir. Okay, no wonder. Uh, we lost that call uh, ultimately. The money thing. Yep. I mean, uh, Bajid just hit it you know, on the head. Um, people collected money in an Anambra election. People were offered money. In fact, they said they were going to take whatever they bring their way, <laughs> and they were still going to vote their, their conscience. conscience. That is a disincentive for politicians in subsequent elections. Yeah. But in terms of the cost of running for election, I must tell you that it's even much more expensive to win tickets in some parties than to run for the real election. So yeah. democracy or electoral contest is an expensive venture, an expensive venture. And let me quickly point this out. Chidoka 
tried to, you know, uh, jump on the IPOP uh, bandwagon by claiming to represent the ideals of IPOP. He didn't score 10,000 votes. Mm, there you go. Mazi <laughs> Okoro uh, Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, our guest in the studio. Good, good morning, sir. Good, good, morning. good morning, sir. Uh, you see, I can't go for a peaceful uh, election, what I saw. You see, the turn out very poor to me because when you say 2 million and less than 500,000 voted, it's not, uh, it's not according to me. You see, this voter education, which I've been uh, showing on this clip every time for people, for government to make sure that voter education is very important because very soon now we're talking about the PC election by next day. And you see, let us look at this issue of airport trade. You see, the airport trade played a very poor role. That, that, that airport trade leads to that poor corner. Now, I am not going on the so this time Nigeria's governor and the federal government. All these are airport boys. Let the government actually negotiate the short dialogue with them and let us find a solution to, for them. So what do they want to employment? Let the instance to say governor try and create employment for all these boys. Let them get themselves engaged in one place or another. So that subsequent issue uh, uh, with that local government, it will not be a problem. And I thank the governor as well, but my heart first to the Kapos family and to the uh, Nigerian government and Anambra State over the date of uh, employment. Mm -hmm. So rest in peace. Sayori, I thank you for what you have been doing, but uh, all the summaries of everything, you just saw it on Saturday on this very program. It's very, very important, and I think it is because of this program for all Nigerians to try to be key into this program every day. Thank you very much. Have a great day in Lagos. Thank you very much uh, for calling in. And indeed, uh, you know, condolences to the family of uh, the yeah. former uh, vice president, uh, Chief uh, Alex Okweme, you know, in this all in midst. Um, well, you just heard his, his take on it. Say, look, everybody's saying nice things about the election, but still, uh, there's, there's much room for improvement. Out of two million, half a million come out. See, you're and we're yeah, that that I, yeah, I want to respond to sure. what uh, Mas has said. Sure. Um, Statistics don't lie. In 2013, 1 1.8 million people registered, um, 465,000 voted, or just 24 percent. That was, uh, it, um, uh, Obiano scored 180,000 in 2013 to beat this same Mwoye, who mm. came second with uh, just 95,000. Mm -hmm. And um, But this at the time around, what was the figure of those two gentlemen? Yes. Uh, it, 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 well, about, about the same thing. Unwoye maintained, um, maintained his, his, uh, his 90 something. Even while in PDP and uh, APC, <laughs> it just improved by 3,000. So 3, he is known by the same people. It's by, by, and large. by the same people. The same people voted for him when he ran as a PDP candidate. The same people voted for him when he ran as a APC candidate. And now, 2 million people registered um, for this election. 1.4 actually picked up their uh, PVCs. But on election day, only 448,000 mm -hmm. or 21.7% voted. So I won't say iPod uh, had any effect because just 24% voted in the last election and now we have 21%. So the same range. And in elections in Nigeria, we don't normally have more than 30% who come out to vote in all the elections since 1960. So it's either the, uh, the voters' lists are padded or something, it's, I think it goes beyond voter education. I think it's just uh, awareness. It's the, 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 the same set of people who vote that still goes out to vote. So it has, it has not changed. Yeah, to talk, talk me about um, the um, uh, PDP candidate who, no, no, the APC candidate, uh, you know, well, there are those who have commented even this morning that he's been all over the place politically. Mm. Uh, I, I don't know. Do you think that kind of thing counts uh, much uh, with people? Um, you know, in, 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 in a sense, he, Mr. President himself had moved around before settling down here and winning the election. People love consistency. I mean, what, we, can't, we can't equate what the president did uh, to what uh, Nwoye is doing. Where, uh, the, Mr. President came from his... Um, uh, uh, CPC, no, uh, from uh, APP. APP, APP to APP. CPC, yes. they, um, is the same, and AMPP, is AMPP. the same trend. He came into a merger. But we have an Nwoye who, is, who, who was elected and is still a serving member of the House of Reps on the platform of the PDP running uh, for, governor. for governorship 
on the platform of the APC. In 2013, he, he was the candidate of uh, the, uh, the of the PDP. So a number of people are saying we don't know whether <laughs> in 20 in 2022 he will be running on the platform of Abga. <laughs> so okay. Gerald, Gerald in Abuja. Good morning. Can you hear us, Gerald? I don't think so. I don't think that call is working. Gerald, final call, final boarding for mm -hmm. Gerald. Hello, Tiari. Oh, okay. Good morning. You made it uh, just uh, before Thierry, the plane took off. I didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> <Wow. laughs> I'm so sorry, Gerald. See if you can get back in again, uh, please. I would like to hear from People you. People seem to respond more to the last call for body. <laughs> <laughs> no. Exactly. Now, a, a caller mentioned the issue of over-policing, you know, the, the electoral space and then the restriction of movement. I think these are areas we need yes, to work yes, on. Yes, yes, I yes. mean, close by in Ghana, election day is work day that you just go vote, go back to your sure. office sure. in Ghana. Sure. I'm not talking of UK or yes, US, yes, yes, Ghana. Yes. So if they can do it, we should be able to do it. But there is a marked improvement here. We didn't have militarization this time around. That is it, yeah. But you see, the police really have to be on ground for elections, especially in volatile mm. areas. But I mm -hmm. think as people, as, we, as our, you know, sophistication in electioneering and I mean, election activities imp improves, you will not even see policemen carrying arms around, you know, police. Yeah, because, because the point has been made that, look, it's just a local election mm -hmm. and um, the police have to deploy as much as they deployed. Um, the, day, the day will come, the way we're going, when things will, I mean, you, as you said, if Ghana can do it, why can't Russia, we? Yeah. That's not to say that we are necessarily the same, but it, we are the same. We are the same African people. Um, they can do it. Well, I mean, we've been we've been following some of their own. Uh, what uh, was it? Not uh, in Ghana first that we saw that uh, what uh, an incumbent lost yeah, uh, an election, uh, yes. an election, and yeah. we we all started talking yeah. about that. And then it and came it to Nigeria. Nigeria yeah. Yeah. It happened to us too. You so know. desire it. Yeah, we, we, we need to desire, <laughs> yeah. desire it uh, strongly enough. So what lessons, if any, uh, for the next, uh, by the way, any more, you know, uh, 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 local elections before the, the big one? Or they're all yeah, pretty we have, much staggered? We have a kit. We have a kit. And uh, Oshun. OK, those ones uh, are still to following, come. Following in quick succession, mm. it is coming July 2018 and uh, or sure, I think is uh, is coming in uh, August. October, uh, August or uh, oh, okay. yeah, August. Okay. So I, I, when I come back, I want to come back because Samson is calling in from Wadi now. Um, are, are there any lessons to learn for those elections from what we have here, or you have to look at each one individually? Good morning, Samson. Oh, good morning, Doctor Ogbiori. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Ogbiori, my brother. Uh, Thank no, you very uh, much. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, good. Let us uh, uh, get something right, Ogbiori. I'm telling you. Sentiment apart, I just left uh, um, um, let's say the old number not up to one year, okay. and I've stayed there for over seven years. Aside anything else, Obiano is a great man. Let me give you four years, no, probably five years ago, as operator, with other students, and all these uh, people, all the stop you are that very. Uh, this might start with the logical status, but I entered the number, you still want to keep a there. In fact, I'm going to pay not less than 30,000. Mm. In fact, I had as in the worst case of being there then. But when this man came in, you know what he did? He restructured, he moved all those guys out. Then he do what? He gave them a good training. He made them what they had now. They're doing very well now. They don't collect back, they don't they do normal good job. Go and get their road. I'm not from the need, but this guy has tried. Compared to when Oku was there, I think I enjoy Oku. Thank you. I'm sure. You know, if I come to your house, if your wife is cooking well, I'm the one to tell you, not that you tell me that my wife is cooking well. I'm telling you, this man has tried to manage us, and let me tell you, that is the best way to go. See what happened in Kwara State, when the people were just, like Oku, yeah, if I just call me this point that they are protesting in the, in the Kwara now, in position of power, when are we going to stop all these things? Yeah. If you're a good person, you're a good person. And this is the best thing you can move forward. Not that you, you, you tell me that I'm going to be wrong with you. It's the only thing I can do in this country. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much for calling in, and a good morning to you. Well, um, that, that's about as much as 
I mean, we, we could go on and on in this vein, but the news is out there. Obiano has won, and we've made these comments. Let's spend the last, the dying minutes of the program, if you will, gentlemen, on Zimbabwe hmm. and uh, Baba Mugabe. Hmm. Um, interesting situation going on there. Uh, they're tired of Mugabe, uh, but they still don't want to disrespect him. And so you have the, uh, quite frankly, uh, uh, incongruous situation <laughs> of the army saying that he is our commander in chief and this is not a coup. Um, and uh, he'll be prevailed upon. And after the event, as you know, he made a public appearance. Yeah. Guys, uh, let's just spend the last few minutes. W what's going on in Zimbabwe? I mean, the whole world is shouting, but is, is, it, is it the fact that the people in Zimbabwe uh, just can't forget the part that Mugabe pay played in, you know, in the dark days of the struggle when he was in the forest and that kind of a thing? No, I think that was it. Um, but the, again, the Gracia, or what's the name of the wife now? Uh, Grace. 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 <laughs> who was that? Who he anointed to become the next president? They could tolerate. They could tolerate Robert Mugabe. Yes. But they were not willing to tolerate a Grace Mugabe anymore, and it was becoming an embarrassment. A situation. And it's very, very close ally, the vice president, yes. who we are told, along with the um, uh, the head of the army and yeah. Mugabe, well, three, quite three frankly, interestingly, three, three, three he was the, 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 the sad to vice president, was the minister for defense for many years. Yes, so, so these the, are comrade the, in arms. Yes, so that's why immediately the, well, pseudo takeover, <laughs> he, he came back to, 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 to Zimbabwe. And so they are willing to give Robert Mugabe you know, a soft landing, and I think he still has about 35, 40 minutes because the deadline they gave to him uh, is about noon today for him to resign. Otherwise, the parliament uh, would impeach him. Okay. They, they had but, the but there was talk about that. wanting, about trying to see if they could allow him to, you know, uh, follow due process, serve out his uh, term, and then be. No, I think no, no, no. no. They, 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 I think the latest, the latest information now is that he has agreed to resign. So they have They've drafted, uh, they have the drafted a letter for him. So before the uh, 12 o'clock deadline, mm. at about, I think they are on his Eastern I time. Eastern mm. time yeah. uh, mm. So uh, he would um, uh, throw in his uh, legislation. But, but then uh, he did well for, Muga uh, for, for Zimbabwe, but then he took them back several years. Today, if you have 10,000, it's as bad. I was going to say, yes, when you said you have, did well, no, no, are you no. a financial journalist? No. He, there's a, there's no, a one, said billion, one billion, uh, what is the what, what is their currency there? Uh, uh, the thing is, they have nine, at least one billion. No, they have, they have, they have Zimbabwe dollars. They, they, they have Zimbabwean dollars. Zimbabwean they dollars. Have, they yes. have even, okay, they have, the Zambia is the Kwacha people. Yeah, they have, they have suspended the uh, Zimbabwean uh, local mm -hmm. uh, uh, currency. They now officially sp uh, spend the dollar. If you have ten thousand dollars in your account, you can only withdraw 20, an equivalent of twenty dollars in a day in Zimbabwe. That's how low they have uh, uh, sunk. And um, the, for a country of um, uh, eighteen million people, uh, for a nine uh, a trillion uh, uh, dollar debt, mm. it's unthinkable. They, uh, they, they, are, they are, even when they moved uh, from uh, the, the, the the dollar. To, to bonds to firm up the, uh, the the economy, it it couldn't work. It so wasn't working. But, but, for for but, for for the vice president as he's coming, they call him a, the crocodile. It's it's like he's been part of the system. Oh yes. They need. In fact, the fear is that he's very could little be worse, different. It could be from worse. Baba Mugabe. It could be worse. That's than, another problem. It could be worse than Mugabe. Okay. So they need international help to bring them mm -hmm. out of the quagmire. They need foreign direct really investment. No for them to get out of the uh, blues. Indeed. Well, the people of Zimbabwe, you know, they, they're, they're treating, you know, uh, uh, Robert Mugabe with, with deference, but the man is frail. The man is frail. I saw TV footage of him inspecting a guard of honor and um, the esteemed gentleman was swaying from side to side. I mean, the, I even the, spe the speech, the you speech he read yesterday that was prepared for him, yes. they, they, where they expected him to resign, he missed out two, two, two pages <laughs> and he was saying, oh, I, I, I missed those two the, lines. Uh, he, he's <laughs> At 93. Be, because what is, happening, what is happening to him, for some reason, I think in his present state, he could never have conceived that it would happen. 
I mean, I can't understand why he would have anointed his wife, uh, touched his wife that you're going to take over after me, if not that somehow the reasoning process... Mm, you know, I think it's just it, the it manipulation of the mind. Yes. I, I think, uh, yeah. you know, he, well, uh, that's it. It's, it's a, we'll, we'll see how it goes, if indeed... Uh, and don't forget, she was also an international embarrassment to Zimbabwe. Went to South Africa yeah. to, to beat up... To cause a the scandal lady. there. Yeah. Cause a scandal. Know. Oh, well, okay, gentlemen, so thank you very, very much. Uh, Yemima Padero and uh, Majid Jamil, uh, thank you very much for coming on and uh, giving us your perspectives on the Anambra uh, election. And um, the next ne ne next stop uh, in, on this trail is what? Uh, Oshun, Ekiti, 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 and then Oshun, Oshun. in uh, quick succession. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you so much for having us. Okay, then. Uh, so that's our program. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition at half 10 in the morning. I'm Yori Folari. Bye-bye for now.